All right, I've got something very exciting to show you guys today. I have a new setup in my setup. That's right, I have a whole dedicated machine to what, you may ask? Well, earthquake monitoring around the globe. I have found a new software called Global Quake. It is in very early release. It, it probably released within the last couple months, if I had to guess. It is so early, but it is such a great piece of software already. But as you can see, I have a 24 inch LG monitor here. It is 1080p, and then I have some Amazon basic speakers and a computer below that powering this system here. And it's showing earthquakes going on around the world in real time. And there has been a lot of activity on this monitor since I have had it set up. I originally started with the 19 inch Dell monitor. It was very old and only had a VGA port on it and that was it. But now that it is fully done and it's the way I want it to be, it is awesome and it does make a lot of noise. I do have it set on a timer to turn the volume on and off at certain times during the day. I'm not going to cover that in this video. There's software out there that can do that for you. I recommend actually a piece of software called Volume Squared. That should do it for you. It has scheduling for volume and windows. So you may ask, well, what, what are you powering this machine with? Well, I have a used HP Elite Desk machine and it has an Intel i7-6700 in it, non-K version. It is a Skylake CPU. I have 32 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM in there. And I have a 200 gigabyte SSD drive and a GT1030 from NVIDIA in there just to power the graphics to make it a little bit snappier to run the display here. I did run it on Intel integrated graphics. It does work with integrated graphics from Intel, um, but just not quite as fast as having a dedicated graphics card in the machine. And there is an earthquake going on in Greece right now. It looks like it's magnitude 2.5. I love this thing. This is eye candy for me. I have always dreamed of having something like this in my setup that is just constantly giving me visual and graphical data that I can just consume. Like I could watch this thing for hours. I absolutely love visual stuff like this. I'm a visual learner, big time visual learner. So having something that shows a map with stuff going on inside the map, whatever it may be, I don't care if it's a weather radar or whatever. I love it and this software has been running 24 seven for a week now and it has not given me any crashes or any problems. I am thinking about actually expanding this setup maybe in the future and adding another monitor on top of that one for something else. I have an idea already, I'm not gonna share it. That may be for a future video, it may not, I don't know. Have I gone crazy with my setup? Absolutely yes, I agree, I'm a madman. I have too many monitors in this room, I have too many monitors in the workshop, I have too much stuff that I own. This is my dream setup here. It has taken so many years to get to this point, let me tell ya. Alrighty, we're gonna move on to part two where I show you how to install and configure this software. Let's get started. Alrighty, so we're gonna go and get Global Quake. So we'll type in Global Quake, and then we can go either to globalquake.net or we can go to their GitHub, but it'd be easier to go to their actual website here. You can see this is their website. This is a pretty nice website, and they have two versions of the software. I'll show you that. We have Global Quake, and uh, we're gonna do the pre-release version. They also have Global Quake servers. I'm not gonna get into that in this video. From what I've seen so far, it looks like you can run Global Quake servers on a dedicated machine in your house, and then you can get the client and connect to that machine with the client so that all your resources are being handled by that main server rather than on the client so that it saves performance on your client. I think that's what it's for. I'm not certain 100%. I haven't tested it out yet, and I really don't need to test it out for my use case here. So we're gonna go to download here, and we're gonna go to download 0.10 pre-18 here. And yep, there it is. So we'll go ahead and open that folder here. We'll go to our downloads folder here. And what we need to do is just basically make a new folder, and we can just name it whatever. I'm just gonna call it Global Quake. 
And then we just need to drag that in there because this program runs in just a single folder. It doesn't install into your system. So I'll just go ahead and take this and we'll close out of the website here and just drag it onto the desktop. If you wanna put this in your programs folder or wherever your documents folder, wherever you like to keep your programs on your computer, put it there. And then once it's there, just go ahead and follow the steps here. So I've opened the folder that it's in here and we're just gonna launch it here. And we're basically gonna go ahead and run it locally. This is gonna take a little while here. It's gonna download all the sources. All right, so that ended up taking about five minutes, and it will also depend on your internet speed and the performance of your computer as to how long it takes for this to update all the sources. But we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what to do next. So what we're going to do is go to select stations here on the bottom left, and then what I just do is I select all. So we'll select all, and so there we go. We have 5,022 selected channels. That's about typical for um, what I've experienced so far the last week running this software. So it'll go anywhere between like 5,000 and 5,200 sta stations at any given time. And the, some stations will go offline and come back online for whatever reasons. And so now that they're all selected, we can just close this window. And now you can see it says 5,022 selected channels here. That's what we want to see. If it says zero selected channels, do the step that I just told you. So now we're going to launch Global Quake here. And it has launched. Now the thing is, the stations will slowly populate on the map here. Right now it's at about 700 stations populated out of 5,000. It does take some time to populate all the stations, and it does eat up your RAM when it's doing that. So the more stations you're running in the software, the more your RAM is going to be taken up. And for whatever reason, this software only uses like a quarter of the amount of RAM that's actually available to your system. I find that really annoying. I'm not sure how to make it use more RAM for your system. Maybe a future update will allow you to use all the RAM on your system. But for now, I have 64 gigs of RAM on my computer right now, and it's only using 15, or 16 gigabytes of that, which is only a quarter of what I have available to my machine. So um, if you have, for example, 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, it's only going to use 8 gigabytes of RAM for the software, at least for now. It might not in the future. But I do recommend if you're going to run the software with every single station on the software, which is over 5,000 so far, you're going to need at least 32 gigs of RAM to run this software reasonably well. And you're also going to need at least a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, I would say at least Skylake or newer from Intel or most Ryzen CPUs that are four core, eight thread or more. The optimal amount of cores for this software is six cores or six cores and 12 threads. Um, and something that's like Skylake, Coffee Lake or newer for Intel or pretty much any current Ryzen or even older Ryzen systems should work for this software as long as they meet those requirements. You're also going to need a decent network connection and not a poor connection. You want a connection that is stable and also has some speed to it. Now this software, it eats up a lot of CPU for sure. And there are ways to optimize the software and I'm going to show you that next. So we're going to go to options here. We're going to get started with all the settings that I set on here. And the very first thing I do is set the home location. I'm not obviously going to give away where I live on the latitude and longitude, so I'm going to put in some false numbers here. I'm going to put in 45.0000, and I'm going to put in, I don't know, like negative 70.0000. I don't know where that's at. And, and then what I do is I change it to miles because we're in the U.S. here. We have a weird system here in the U.S. for whatever reason. And then that's it. This is good for this page. Graphics. I usually leave the FPS at 30. If you have a really high-end machine, go ahead and bring it up to 60 if you want. And then I also display technical earthquake data and pretty much leave all these checked here. I disable 24 hours format and then old events here. I usually just leave this default. You can color um, the events and the events will show up as circles on your display. Basically, the bigger the circle, the bigger the quake. Also, you can filter it by circle color so like that you can either go by color by age color by depth or color by magnitude i usually just color by age and then i leave everything default here and then pretty much what i do is i do based on sensor type for the shape of the the stations on the map 
and we'll get into that a little later. I also enable anti-aliasing. It just makes it look a little better. And then the station size multiplier really depends on the size of your screen and the resolution of your screen. I typically keep it about right here between 60 and 70, about 65, because it just looks less cluttered on the screen. And then cinema mode, what I do is I bring this um, zoom multiplier. This is how far it zooms in whenever there's a quake detected. I bring it up just a couple notches here, just so it's a little bit closer. I like to be a little closer to the scene. And then, yeah, that's good here. Everything else is good. Alerts, this is important. If you have your home set on here, you're going to want to um, let it alert you if there's an earthquake nearby. You don't have to do it, of course, but I like it a lot. I like it when it does that. So basically, it'll alert you and how many miles or kilometers away you are from the epicenter. I'm going to make this about 500 miles for the local area and then the magnitude at which earthquakes will be alerted i change this to 0 0.1 because i like to know exactly where all of them are happening at any given time i don't i'm not bothered by the noises or anything i'm used to it and then the regional area this is kind of the area outside your local area i change this to about 750 or 800 um, that would be perfectly fine and then basically the global this is um, the magnitude it needs to be reached in order to alert you on screen that there's an earthquake. Mag magnitude 6 is way too high. I bring it down to point 0.1 and I leave it there. It's perfectly fine. It does alert you a lot when it's that low for both of these, but I love that. I want to know what's going on everywhere and I don't want to miss anything. And then everything else is perfectly fine and then we'll go to performance here. So hypo center finding resolution. This is uh, how accurate it is at finding the center of the epicenter where the earthquake happened. Now, the higher this is, the more CPU it's going to eat up. And what I would recommend is either leave it at default 40. So 40 is usually the default for the system. So you can basically test the hypocenter search and it will give you, okay, it was 88 milliseconds to do that. And then what I recommend you do to see how well your system can run with this value here is recalibrate and it'll tell you pretty much where your system can handle. So my 13900K can handle up to about 0.84, which is high. My monitor display, which is next to me, can handle about 0.44 for reference. It's got an i7-6700 in it. So if you press recalibrate and wherever it lands, you can leave it there and it'll be perfectly fine. Or you can leave it at 40 by default. I'm just gonna leave it here uh, at almost 85 it looks like waveform data storage I'll show you what that is later on but basically it gives you a graph of all the individual stations you can go to an individual station and see the graphs of um, waves going on in the ground and this is how long it stores that data in the graph in minutes default it's five if you have a powerful computer you can bump it up higher Personally, I don't need anything above five, so I'll just leave it at five or six. Six will be fine. I also highly recommend you use all your CPU cores if you're dedicating a machine to this. Um, otherwise, you don't have to. And then we'll go to advanced here. So this is the maximum number of stations that need to pick up shaking in order to alert you. I bring it to four. I got to know everything that's going on. And then here, um, this is the maximum number of stations that can alert to an earthquake, basically. 60 is fine. If you feel like you can increase it because you have a better computer, go ahead and increase it. I leave it at 60. 60 is a lot of stations to report an earthquake, so I think it's perfectly fine. Everything else down here, I leave default. And then debug. So here are some things you can turn on. Clusters basically shows the clusters of stations that are reporting a earthquake, and it shows up as a white square on your screen. I really don't see any point to that so I leave it disabled and then display stations assigned to clusters basically any stations that are detecting shaking and put an epicenter on your screen will it will show all the details of each station in my opinion it clutters up the screen way too much so I leave it disabled and then enable earthquake reports for whatever reason I was able never able to find this folder um, when I had it enabled for a couple days so I ended up disabling it and then show um, PKP and PKIKP waves. I enabled it, but I didn't see any difference on screen as to what it does. So I just leave it disabled. And then display epicenter confidence polygons. This shows like 
a blue, a green, a yellow, an orange, and a red a circle around the epicenter where it has the highest confidence whenever an earthquake happens. I liked it at first. It showed it um, in a really small area, but then later on I realized that um, sometimes it takes up the entire screen and it looks like a bunch of zigzag lines everywhere across the map and it just looks ugly so I ended up disabling it and basically all I leave on is reduced number of revisions that's all I leave checked there and then we can go ahead and save here and all of our stations have been updated and then here we have some things you can turn on and turn off down here on the bottom left cinema mode if you press C on your keyboard it'll go into cinema mode if you drag your mouse, it will disable it. You can also turn off sound alarms if you want to by pressing S and you can disable it. I'm going to re-enable it. I like sounds. You can also disable earth, old earthquakes on screen if you don't want them. So I leave that on. I like to see where old earthquakes are. It also shows you the seed links, which is the station. It has something to do with the amount of stations or whatever. I'm not quite sure. It also shows you your RAM and FPS. There is one thing I forgot to configure. So if we go to graphics here and then stations, there is one setting I forgot to turn on, which is hide stations with nato no data. So go ahead and check that and save. And then look, our map is not near as cluttered. And yeah, so that would be it. And looks like it might be alerting to something. Like there's a little bit of activity going on here. So these stations with the, there we go. We have an earthquake. Oh, wow. We're having two at the same time. Okay, so it's showing magnitude 3.4. It shows the depth is, wow, 443 miles. I'm not sure if that's accurate. It also gives you the air between what it thinks is right. So it's about 3.9 miles here, give or take. So if we go back to cinema mode, it should hop between these two earthquakes here. It shows the number of stations that reported the quake is 14. It says it's 85% correct. Now this one over here says it's 50% correct. And then the software is giving it a D in quality because it ha doesn't have much confidence in its location or strength. Now this one, the quality is A, which means the software is highly confident that the earthquake happened right where it is and how strong it is as well and how deep it is. But now if we go to an individual station, we'll go to this one here, and we click on it, this is the monitoring graph I was talking about earlier. You get to see this is five minutes of shaking graphs here for this particular station. So that is really cool. You can make it go way longer than that if you want. And I don't need that. It just takes up so much RAM when you do that. And then we see there's numbers on the stations here. I'm not entirely sure exactly what it means, but if I had to guess, it has to do something with ground acceleration or motion. So I'm assuming the higher these numbers are on the stations below the triangles, the more the ground is moving or shaking. Um, whenever there has been earthquakes in the past, these numbers tend to go really high, like 1,000 plus sometimes, 2,000 plus. Um, so I imagine it has something to do with the way the ground is moving and how harshly it is moving. So if we go here, let's see, this one, it's at 43, and then the ones nearby are like 6.4 and 2.1. So it does have something to do with that, I do believe. And then also on the right here, we have the list of earthquakes that have been confirmed on the map here. They will show up in a list here on the right side of the screen, and it will build over time of course and then your most recent quakes will be at the very top of the list and there's a couple more things i want to mention here last before we go to the next segment so this little pink cross in maine here is your home location the pink cross will always be your home location at least until the software changes it to something else now another thing i want to talk about is the color of these triangles or they may be circles if you configure them be circles or other um upside down triangles whatever it may be so dark blue would mean that th there's pretty much no shaking going on at the station. Now, the brighter the color of these triangles, then the more they're shaking. So if these like turn a bright green, then there's obviously some shaking going on. If it turns yellow, there's some major shaking going on. If it goes orange, there's some big earthquake going on nearby. And if it's red, then you've got a massive quake of some sort in the region. So basically these triangles, if they turn colors besides blue for example green yellow orange or red then you've got some motion in the ground basically the ground is shaking if 
these are lighting up other colors other than blue or light blue. But nobody's gonna really feel these blue ones unless they light up like a bright green, yellow, orange, or red color. All right, this has been a really fun topic to explore. I just love this kind of software that's completely free that allows you to just visualize everything in one piece of software. So simple to set up, at least for me. I figured it out pretty quickly how things were working in the menus and settings. So it's pretty self-explanatory, I would say, and I highly recommend 10 out of 10 that you check this out. It is a cool piece of kit to have in your setup for sure. And you can run it on pretty much any modern computer these days. So hopefully that shed some light on how to get the program set up and installed. And hopefully I made it simple for you guys to understand and follow along. And hopefully you found it entertaining and informative as always. I am probably going to be taking a break from my channel for a while now. I need kind of some time to recuperate. I'm just getting over being sick like four or five times in a row. I, I need to rest a little bit for sure. Uh, I've just been through a lot since um, just before Christmas. The last couple months I've been sick so much. So I'm going to need some rest and relaxation time. I'm not sure what my next video is going to be. I've kind of gone through the whole list of videos that I've wanted to get out. I've got to make a new list now. Time for Nate to have a little break. So that is it for the video. Consider leaving a like or a dislike. Subscribe down below so you get notified exactly when a new video is out. Also, consider ringing that bell down below. It'll notify you instantly when a video is out. Consider leaving a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of this video. Was it exciting, entertaining? Are you in love with the software? Did you even know that this kind of software existed? Let me know. Tell me if the video needs to be improved. Tell me if anything needs to be adjusted in the video. As always, tell me why you dislike this video. Video, please please tell me why also consider sharing this video on your favorite social media platforms that is greatly appreciated and if you really want to contribute to my channel you can become a channel member for five dollars a month or you can also go to my about page I have donate links for PayPal and cash app I also have a discord server if you really want to join it will be on the about page as well and that's it for now I will see you guys later bye for now